Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny, 14 hours of sleep this week, Roblox. And y'all know my co host, Justin, the winter cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a good episode, oh. man. <laughs> Uh, Justin, the winter customizer bird, and Uncle, I did that thing we don't talk about, Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley related, Nutsack, the last EDC bag you'll ever want or need, and Brush Hero, the ultimate detail brush. Today, we are talking about our 2020 Harley model predictions. What's going on, guys? What's up? Y'all ready to storm Area 51? Yeah. Are you? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that people saying that they're gonna, you know, storm area fifty one and there was a guy with a little minigun it says laughs in three thousand minute <laughs> rounds per minute. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so is it that people think that now that's been acknowledged that it exists that it's no longer gonna be protected? No, that their whole theory is based off of they can't stop us all. Really? That, yeah. That's literally what the event is titled. Yeah. It says Storm Area fifty one, they can't stop us all. But you got to be able to Naruto run, first of all. Yeah. I don't know what that is. That's a anime. It's when you run with your arms back like that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Wait, I run what? S- I run slower. Like yeah. That. There's a whole thing. I said, we didn't make fun of you in high school because you liked anime. We made fun of you because you ran around with your arms behind your back screaming. Fair enough. I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care what you like. Just don't be fucking weird. Be weird by yourself. Yeah, be weird in private. Or find other people who were just as weird as you and be and weird. And also do them. it in private. Because yeah. <laughs> they were they were with other weirdos. Just, uh, I mean, we're going off the deep end here. Yeah. Yeah. Really. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's like, they can't stop us all. I'm like, y- yeah. yes, they can. <laughs> with very little effort. Yeah. You're, you're going in there with, with zero armory. Like, it's... I would imagine. It's, well, and they don't have a blueprint of where they're going. No. Correct. And every square foot of that space, the military knows. Exactly. And oh, they yeah. have all their sensors. They're going to know you're there before you know that they're there. Oh, yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah. I, it's like you're going in there first off unarmed. So it's like. Well, you know, this could be a great example of Darwinism. That's oh, exactly that's, what yeah. I said. And I said, I said, they say that, you know. <laughs> the whole evolution shit isn't isn't real like that is survival of the fittest right there <laughs> that is natural selection at its finest 100 percent. yep that's why i said i hope someone is stupid enough to actually go through it and try it oh you know people are going to show up because i i just can't wait to hear that <laughs> and just a spray of pink <laughs> oh yeah pink mist it'll be pink it'll mist. be a complete yep. disaster for them yep <laughs> and then just the shit show that occurs after that like you know, people get pissed off when a police officer tases a guy charging at him with a knife. So, oh yeah, can you imagine if an unarmed civ- civilian charges a military base and gets turned into pink mist? Oh, oh. no one will know about it. <laughs> <You're probably right. laughs> Very few people would know about it. <laughs> Very few people would know. You're I mean, pro- you're probably spot on. With they that. are going into the desert. Yeah, yeah. The mafia buried all those bodies out there. So, <laughs> all right. So let's let's pull this back on track so uh, the 2020 models are going to be released next month so Correct. in August, towards with the end of august right um so let's see how good we are at predicting the future when it comes to harley davidson i'm predicting we're not going to be good at predicting yeah no that's yeah. that's a pretty accurate prediction so pretty far off um so let's start at the sports jeez uh, see 14 Bef- hours of sleep before we get into that did anybody all uh, invest in some harley stock yet N- no i can't oh that's true well Never mind. Why? I was up like 6% on Harley today. Really? Yeah. I, was, I went back and looked at like six years worth of data, and right there at that early July, right when the new bo- models get released, a spike almost every year. So yeah. I'll, I'll just ride to the top and then let it burn. <laughs> <laughs> well, just ride it out till next spring because it's going to peak again in the spring. That's true. It does do that every spring too. <laughs> Usually the summer peaks are higher. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the Sportster lineup. So mm. as the only one who's ever owned a Sportster in this group, what are you thinking about for the Sportsters? I, I'm i literally torn in half. I feel like we can either see a big, gigantic change or we're going to see parts and paint. 
Oh, definitely, definitely going to see parts and paint. Yeah, I just, I, I, we, I mean, we've said it a million times the Sportster lineup is in desperate need of a refresh, but I think that the 48 Special and the uh, Iron 1200 was the refresh that they thought was going to be sufficient. And it wasn't. And it wasn't. I mean, the Iron 1200 is pretty dope. The Iron 1200 should have been came out at the same time the 883 did. I mean, it's still a good bike. It's for it's, what it is. It's a lot better than the 883. It's definitely oh, yeah. worth the extra thousand dollars. Oh yeah. Um. But I think that if they made it cool, it would cut too far into the other models that we're going to be seeing that they've already announced, mm. like the like the the custom and the Street Fighter, all that stuff. Mm. I don't I, think it would. I don't think it would though. Because I mean, you can think whatever you want. It's but. still a very specific market of people that look for that bike. It's still a very entry level bike. And quote unquote a girl's bike, small person bike. What I see is parts and paint this year. They're going to release the Street Fighter sometime soon. And then either 2021 or 2022, the Sportsters will get those motors. Oh, I could see that. That's my prediction. But I don't think we're going to see anything major this year. No. But see, I think we have to see something major this year. Maybe not in the American market, but they're going to have to do it in Europe. Because yeah. the European emissions the laws EU. take effect this at the end of this year. Hmm. So um, on RevZilla, Lemmy did a video talking about the future of the Sportster. And one of his thoughts or you know, options that he could foresee is what you just said. Putting the this new modular motor into the Sportster. Because... They've already said they're going to have multiple displacements yep. of that motor, and that works. It meets all the standards for the EPA for 2021 and the standards for EU 2020. So we may see that on the European side, do the test market there. Yeah. And then when they have to do it here in the States, it will already have a good R&D and kind of proof of concept will be completed on the European side so they can just swap it over and have that other production going here. Yeah, they'll have to have their California model. (laughs) Uh, The wonderful state of communism. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I I think you're right, though. Parts paint for the American lineup. Um, Do you think the Sportster has a long future ahead of it? Yes. Oh, yeah. I don't think the sports will ever go away. But maybe they'll brand a new model the Sportster? Mm, I don't know about that. Because if you look at the Sportster from, what, the 60s or 70s, it's gotten smaller since then. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the 60s, 70s model Sportsters are actually about the size of today's Softails, maybe a little bit shorter but from like a height perspective and kind of the feel, but they've gotten smaller. And then the, you know, Fat Boy and all that, when the FL uh, soft toes were released. I don't think that's accurate, but I don't have enough solid information. From my understanding, the 48 was based off of the 1948 model. And the 72 was based off of the 1972 model. I don't know how that scaled or how you know, closely were, hmm. but that was my understanding. I could be way fucking wrong, but yeah. Or was that just like a design perspective? No fucking clue. Yeah. That's why I said, I've got no solid data to back that up. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I go off of pictures and the pictures, they look like they're actually larger than what they look like today. Are you basing this off of seeing people riding them? Yeah. Okay. Well, you're also talking about when people, the average height of a male was like five, four, five, six. What, what back in the seventies? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so, I don't know, may, they may just have a model that is a Sportster, but it's based off the entire drivetrain of the street, or the Street Fighter. Yeah, they're going to have to do something with it. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, because everyone die. that I talk to, you're either a diehard Sportster fan and you just love it, or you buy a Sportster because that's what you can afford to get into the Harley market. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then go from there. 
I'd buy another one, but it would be to either A, turn it into a scrambler or some sort of off-road thing and beat the shit of it, or B, to flip it. Because you can flip those things so easy. Yeah. Just buy it cheap, customize the shit of it, and sell it for a profit. Oh, yeah. Throw some decent paint on it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, plus the half a million parts and the aftermarket that's available for them. Oh, yeah. yeah. That plus the the video credentials or like the how, mu- how many views and stuff they bring in is ridiculous on YouTube. So like still to this day, my Sportster videos are outperforming some of my Dinas. Hmm. Even because though they're it, two years old. Because it's a great entry-level bike. Yep. You know, I mean, w- when you can get into a new one for, what, 9000 Yep. You, I mean, that's hard to shake a stick at. Yep. I still get comments on my sports videos almost daily. Hmm. To this day. So what about the Pan America and Street Fighter? Um, now, earlier this year, we saw the trademarking of the Harley Davidson Bronx. And then recently we saw that they had trademarked the name bare knuckle. And a lot of, a lot of thoughts around what the naming, what models those names are going to be for. And they actually had the Bronx out before they released the uh, concepts for the street fighter. So everyone, as soon as the street fighter came out, Oh, that's going to be the Bronx. Because everyone was saying that the Bronx kind of reminds you of a Street Fighter esque bike, uh, but a lot of folks now That's are saying racist. the bare <laughs> knuckle is probably going to be the Street Fighter. The name of the Street Fighter. Yeah. What if they're both the name? You've got the Sportster Forty Eight, the Sportster Iron, the Sportster Seventy Two. What if we see the Street Fighter is the frame name or the the family name? And we get the Street Fighter Bronx, Bronx and the Street Fighter Bare Knuckle. But isn't the frame of the Street Fighter the same as the Pan America? Or are they completely different frames? I'm pretty sure they're way I different. I would hope that they're way damn different. Okay. The motors the mo- are the drive be train very similar. The drivetrain is yeah. going to be the same. Yeah. Okay. So the Pan America would be the family. And then whatever yeah. engine size will probably like, be the name. Yeah, I mean, just like you have the, the BMW GS 1200 and the, the GS 1250. and Right, right. So you're thinking the Street Fighter Bronx and the Street Fighter Bare Knuckle would be just different styles of the Street Fighter. Either different styles or they might even be completely... I mean, it, I can see it going two ways. You can have the Street Fighter Bronx be like the street fighter in the because they've already said they're going to be in like four or five different power variations Mm -hmm. so the street fighter bronx could be the the 883 or whatever and then the bare knuckle could be the 1200 version yeah or it could go the other way and it'd be kind of like uh the iron so you have the the or no sorry the street fighter bronx could be the 883 and the street fighter bare knuckle could be like the 1200 okay yeah that that makes sense to me that th- that they would do that. Yeah. Did yeah. I just say the same thing twice? Yes, you did. You okay. Did. I, I didn't. I was going to call you out on it, bro. I'm uh, I'm but fucked I, up in the head too. But I've I, had a rough week. But I, I'm really tired, so I was like, well, maybe maybe I heard it. But wrong it'll be the named based on engine size. Either yeah. that, or it could be named the Street Fighter Bronx 883 and the Street Fighter Bronx 1200, and then have the Street Fighter Bare Knuckle 883 and the Street Fighter Bare Knuckle 1200. Oh, I don't know. It, I mean. That's a, that's a lot of bikes there. It is, but I mean, we kind of already see it within the forty eight and the forty eight. Well, not really, because those are the same motors. But you get the the iron is a prime example. The eighty three, the iron eighty three, and the iron twelve hundred. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Be interesting to see. I'd like to see the power variations be further apart than eight eight three and twelve hundred. Well, isn't it like a seven fifty and a twelve fifty? I, I've seen four. I, I've heard that they're going in up four different variations, right. but I don't remember what the highest one was. I want to say it was 1250 and yeah. 750 were the top and bottom. So, eh, I don't know. Hmm. Depending on how light it is, that 1250 could be plenty. Because yeah. the Iron 1200 is no slouch. No. It's it's a pretty quick bike. No. And the Sportster 1200s in general are pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, they, they can handle the highway much yeah. easier than the 883s. So going back to the sports, because we keep kind of doing the comparison, do you think we'll get a sixth gear on the sports this year? This year, no. 
No. I think that'd be a game changer in the market, though. I mean, in, within Harley, it would. Yeah, yeah. I, I see that complaint come up more than anything else. Yeah. People can deal with the small tanks and everything like that. It's that, that six gear that I hear way more well, often. Well, yeah, because you can swap out a tank for a lot less than a transmission. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I see on Reddit, I see the tank question come up quite a bit yeah. as mm-hmm. to what tanks people swap out on their Sportsters. I've actually been seeing a lot because I'm still part of, like, the Sportster junkies and all that. Um, apparently it's either a direct bolt on or it's a very readily available kit. Cause I see people putting the new soft tail tanks on sportsters left and right now. Granted, hmm. you're only getting about half a gallon to maybe three quarters of a gallon, but shit, that's another 20, 25 miles. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. I would just go complete aftermarket, get a nice five gallon tank Yeah. and yeah. get a cool custom design on it or something. Yeah, yeah I agree. Or just, I mean, I wish they would bring back the the touring Sportster. Yeah. Oh yeah. But that was a five gallon tank, wasn't it? I think it was four point seven, but yeah, yeah, it was, it was around there. All right, so let's talk soft tails. Mm-hmm. Now, we saw the big revamp. What two two model years ago? Twenty eighteen. And then they did a little bit on the twenty nineteens. For the twenty twenty, were you thinking just parts and paint? I think, I think yeah. we will see a CVO soft tail. Yeah. Does the so I see, I does say the we, sport glide fall into the soft, new soft tail category? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you they'll do a CVO version of that. Oh, I, I bet it's gonna be the uh, FX DR. Mm, ah. My bet's on Fat Bob. I think we're gonna see a one seventeen Fat Bob. It's a popular bike. It's a super so popular I could, bike. Yes, I could see that. And they've already done, which I wish they would have branded it different the 114 is labeled as the fat bob special i wish they would have made it more special yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but well, i so, think we're going to see a cvo fat bob so back in the day they did have the cvo dyna oh, shit that was my bad I, that was my I, watch <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember which model dyna it was based off of but they did have a cvo dyna I know they've had CVO soft tails. I mean, uh, Green had one that time we were up there. It was a CVO breakout. You're right. Yeah. yeah. I know I am. But uh, I don't know. I think they're still trying to push the FXDR pretty hard. You can try to push as much as you want. That's, you know, you put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. You're right. It's Whoa. the CVO Dyna Super Glide. Yeah. And it's hideous. <laughs> it is ugly. But... That was the only bike that could really hang with the kind of souped up V rods. Is yep. it, is it, it, is it looks V rod esque. Is it just ugly because of paint? It's just an ugly bike. I don't like the way it sits. I don't like the paint. I don't like anything about it. Granted, that came out in like 2005, yeah. 2006. So the style was a little bit different. But yeah. uh, it, ain't, it ain't party. <laughs> it, it does have that V rod esque style yeah. to it, though. So I. I, I Ugh, they need God, to come out with a soft tail CVO, but I, I don't know because I aren't, aren't all the CVOs this year uh, touring? Yes. Yeah. I will say though that a Sport Glide CVO would do well, especially if they did Cause you something know what, drastic on it. Because you know what they would do with those bags, right? They'd color match them. Color match them <laughs> or make them like regular hard bags and then put an actual fairing on it. I think that'd be dope as fuck. Like that FXRT fairing we saw in Dallas. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I haven't checked it recently, but I know that Laidlaw's Sport Glide went pretty deep into the Battle of the Kings. I mean, that's already something they have the patent on. Like they already have all those parts. It would literally be a paint and parts bike. Is that is that over yet? What? The Battle no. of the Kings? I don't think so. Damn. No. But, uh, I think the U.S. one is. I-, I couldn't tell you. But not the international. But, uh, yeah, I think that would sell, like, fucking hotcakes. Yeah. I don't think they will because it would actually be cool, and Harley doesn't do cool shit. <laughs> 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 they don't do things that make bikes sell. But Wait, uh, wait, no, wait. They, no, no, no. We, we, we are so Harley fanboys. We're, we don't ever talk shit about Harley, guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Because we're Harley snobs. All right, now the joke's over. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I I would love to see them do that, but I highly doubt we'll see it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so, Battle of the Kings, the the uh, UK national winner is the Crook, 
by Wars Harley Davidson. I have a chip from there. I have a couple chips from there. I mean, there's only like three dealerships over there, but <laughs> which is funny. That's the European headquarters is in just it's just outside of London. Yeah, and it's it's a kind of a basic looking fucking street bob. <laughs> yeah, it's got that. Uh, what the hell? Are you kidding me? Well, it, it is England. I'm about to say it is the UK. They got pretty. I mean, no offense to our England listeners, y'all's tastes are pretty different than ours. Yeah, they got that you way know. to be PC on man, that one. I'm getting good, oh, man. Oh man, I was I was waiting for you to oh, go good. Ken on that one. <laughs> I've I've had a lot of meetings with higher ups this week, so I'm I'm having to 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 you know rein myself in a little bit. So I'm getting better. <laughs> uh, so. We know the Pan America is coming out. Um, have they actually confirmed the Street Fighter will be out in August, or do you think that will be a mid-year? So according to the Harley website that I was just looking at, mm-hmm. both the Pan America and the Street Fighter are listed as 2020 motorcycles. Well, the mid-years are yeah. 2020s. So are it could be aren't. released in August, or it could be released in March, yeah. April time frame. Yeah. Because those would both be 2020 model year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't have it on here, but when is the live wire supposed to be released? August. August, yeah. Okay, so... They will be officially shipping in August. Will they be 2019s? No, 2020s. Okay, okay. So the I lightning... Is, or the lightning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the live wire will be out. Um as a 2020 model year. Cool. Correct. And I've also seen that some dealers have already gotten like a, like a preview model in. Hmm. Not for sale, but it's kind of like their their showpiece. Sure. So kind of, you know. Teaser? Yeah. Okay. I know Laidlaw had one. That's I didn't watch the video because I don't watch anything motorcycle related, but uh, I saw him, I saw it post. <laughs> oh, I watch. I mean, I, I, I hate to say it, but I watch zero motorcycle content. I'll maybe watch like some road rage stuff if it pops up. But now, okay, so we'll we'll go down this rabbit hole. Uh, is that because you don't want to have anything influence what you're working on from a content perspective? Not or intentionally. Do you find it to be boring? No, I. I mean, <laughs> I, I used to watch it for hours on end, but. I think now it just, I think that is a positive thing that's come from it is I'm able to kind of still maintain my own style, but it really just comes down to when I sit down to watch something, I want to just watch something either extremely uh, engaging. So I'll watch something space or science or engineering related. So nerdy. Yeah. Nerdy, very nerdy or something complete opposite. So like fail army or just viral videos and just yeah. garbage. <laughs> I, I stay at complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Oh, fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. I pretty much only you and the honorary one and Maxwell are the only motorcycle YouTube channels I'll watch. I take it back. I will watch something motorcycle related if I am in it. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Super vain, but I, I watched the honorary ones, uh, Arkansas video. Uh, I watched Maxwell's bring it home ride when he released it a year ago because you're in it because i was in it yeah well there you go hey you have standards i'm i'm just i i know what my time is worth (laughs) and if i'm gonna get to watch myself i'll watch it (laughs) all right so let's jump over to a ad break from nutsack and then when we come back we'll talk about the touring models Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying a Around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds, sunglasses, vape stuff, and business cards. It is great having less shit in our pockets, and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down. If you buy using our link, Nutsack will give you $5 off to enjoy a beer. Head over to nutsack.com B2W. That's N-U-T-S-A-C. 
dot com slash be the number two W to get yours today. All right, and we are back. So jumping over to the bikes that actually matter, the touring models, uh, what are we thinking? I mean, what would be the next progression for the touring models this close to the current revamp? Mm. I don't really see I don't, much. I don't, I don't yeah. see much coming out because they just released the... Uh, well, they did the upgrade boombox and the 114s. Yep. Yeah, but they just um, released the... Uh, the Electric Glide standard. The standard, yeah. I wouldn't say that's a revamp, though. No, but uh, I, I feel like they they don't want to overshadow it too much mm-hmm. because it just came out. Well, but that's the entry model touring bike. Yeah, but I mean... So every other touring bike literally overshadows it. True. <laughs> but I mean, I feel like, that you know, they still want to push it. Yeah. Yeah. I th- I don't think... I'm kind of on the same page you are. Um, I don't think that we'll see a big change during the release. I think we will see kind of like the electric glide just kind of... It wasn't a mid-year. It wasn't an August release. It just kind of fucking popped up one yeah, day. Yeah, it just kind of came out. I think we'll see something kind of similar to that, but with a road glide fairing. Yep. Like a road glide standard. standard. Yep. You know, when we were talking about, we did see a lot of comments about that, that they would be happier if they had a road glide standard. Yep. A fixed fairing. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I see a lot of people talk about, they don't give a shit about the radio or the navigation or anything like that. Yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense. It makes perfect sense, especially on a business standpoint. It's like, oh, we're going to put less shit into it and we're going to sell more. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, knock a couple thousand dollars off of it. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I could be way off on this, but also when you're thinking of how much that technology costs them, I feel like they'd come out way in the green. Black, oh, the black, the black. Yeah, it's black or red. I mean, <laughs> no, that's in that's, stock trade. It's green, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't feel like getting into that debate. <laughs> but uh, I just. My only concern is all the open space that they'd have to figure out how to either just not do anything there because the speakers on the road glide are a lot bigger from a surface area perspective of the cutouts and then that big ass gap from the actual head unit. I don't know if they would put a cubby there like they did on the electric glide or or what, but the speakers it would just I think it'd look funny if you just had left it flat or just yeah, didn't put anything I there. I don't think it would. I mean, look they, at... They look could at, put extra um, boxes on there so you'd have, like, another glove box storage. I say figure it the fuck out. You got teams of engineers figure it out. Oh, yeah. And it, it, it wouldn't cost them that much. Well, no. <laughs> Honestly, it's just less cutting. Yeah. Yeah. So the electric guide standard comes in at eighteen nine nine nine. Mm-hmm. Which what does the Road King base come in at? Nineteen three, nineteen seven. For some reason, I was thinking it was like eighteen nine or eighteen seven. Get this, get this Harley website to work, right? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> well, of all the motorcycle websites, Harley's is somewhat decent. Yeah, I agree. So the Road King starts at nineteen two eight nine. Oh, there you go, nineteen three. And then. The street glide is twenty one two eight nine. Road glide is twenty one five eight nine. Mm. I think just having a touring bike that you can advertise under that twenty k mark is a game changer. Yeah, you'd be able to cover all three of your touring styles: your Batwing, your Shark Nose, and your windshield bikes. Yeah, yeah. because then the Road King Special jumps to twenty three. Mm-hmm. And then the Street Glide Special and Road Glide Special jump to 27. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a pretty big bump. It's a big gap right there. But you're also, this year, you're getting the larger motor plus all the blacked out pieces yeah. and the upgraded boombox or the upgraded speakers. It's like the Stage 1 yeah. or Stage 2 speakers. Yeah. So but I like also that. think that the standards are going to be really appealing to two different types of people. You're going to have the people that want a touring bike but can't afford to drop 24K. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have the people that want a touring platform to build off of. Yeah. They're going to be dropping 
10 to 15 grand into the bike anyways, mm-hmm. they don't care about all the extra fancy crap. It's going to be taken off anyways. I mean, if they'd have had like a road glide standard with the, the mo the, you know, the current motor and everything like that, that'd be something I'd be interested in because I don't give a shit about GPS. It's what my phone is for. Exactly. I mean, Ooh, you know, if they left the, uh, head unit space, they just left it flat. You could totally go in and mount like hard mount a phone holder there. I'm thinking you can hard mount a phone holder. You could hard mount a power vision. Yeah. Cause you're talking about performance oriented guys are oh, going to yeah. have power visions or some sort of onboard tuner with a screen. Yeah. I mean, it's a no fucking brainer. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. That that would be cool. Or you could keep the 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 standard you Cubby. Know, hole for the stereo, and then companies could just make fucking templates. Kind of like when you replace a radio in a car, mm-hmm. you buy the the thing that oh, fits yeah, the either face. the single din or the double din. Yeah. And then it's cut out for whatever the application is. I mean, that would be <laughs> a no fucking brainer right there. Yeah. Yep. I mean, just leave it to where anybody with a fucking CNC machine or really just some steel injection plate and molding, either injection molding or I mean, if you want to do it out of like aluminum or something like that, just a fucking uh, plasma cutter. Psh, psh, psh. You have a fucking mount right there. Yep. Yep. And it would look dope as fuck. <laughs> oh yeah, get a powder coated whatever color you want. Exactly. All right, so I'm trying to think. What have we not? touched from a 2020 prediction special now let's just think about this august because you know they're gonna have to do something big um because 2020 well it's no it's not an anniversary year not an so, anniversary mm-hmm. yeah. um i don't know I, i'm just i i think harley has something up their sleeve that they're gonna drop because you know if we look at what they're doing on the international market they're gonna have that 300 something cc motorcycle for china yeah completely different platform i mean they've partnered with a chinese manufacturer to actually build the bike um but they're doing something for the chinese market they're doing special things in the india market and and pretty much the southeast asia market trying to increase their presence there because the ceo for harley said he wants 50% of Harley Davidson's revenue to come from the international market. So I'm wondering if there's going to be any applications that they're going to do that could kind of cross the bridge between the U S market and the Asian market. I mean, would y'all want to see a 300 CC esque bike from Harley in the U S I I mean, no, no, because they did a 500, with the Buell Blast. And they had a Street 500. Yeah, and I mean, they, they got they the Street, street 500 and 750. Which yeah. were garbage. <laughs> oh. I mean, well, not only that, but, like, the Street 500s, like, they weren't small bikes. I mean, they were smaller than... They're still not small bikes. Yeah, they're still they're, not small no. bikes. So it's like, I get the the power, but, I mean, I mean, my poor wife, she can't fucking flat foot a Grom. So, like, what the hell True. is she supposed to ride? I mean, the street is had a taller seat height than the Sportster did. Yeah. So what I think that we will see, I don't think we're going to see anything huge this year. Because th- of the Pan America and the Street Fighter already coming out? Eh. What I think we'll see is because I fe- I'm afraid that that international talk is getting too mainstream. And right now the primarily Harley market is all, hey, it was not Merck, it's not a Harley. I think we'll see enough of a hey, look over here so they can keep funding money over here to generate that revenue before they can do something cool. Yeah, maybe. That's possible. Yeah. I think if anything happens this year, because they're releasing, the live wire is dropping mm-hmm. for 2019. 20. It, well, it says, according to their website, it'll be available in 2019. It'll be a 2020 model, though. Yeah, it'll be a 2020 model. Okay, but it's going to be coming out this August. Yeah, yes. correct. And then you have the the Pan America mm-hmm. and the Street Fighter mm-hmm. are coming out, whether it's in August or April. It's coming out for 2020. I don't foresee them making anything drastic happen with any other models mm. because of those three bikes coming out, what, eight months apart from each other? Six months apart? Yeah, roughly. 
Yeah. That's a lot of stuff going on in a short period of time. Yes. I mean, that's that's three bikes. Mm-hmm. Or three completely different models. Yes, yeah. three completely different bikes. Yeah, that's, that's not a paint and parts. That's <laughs> different motor, different yeah, that's drive train. Platform. That's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're, they're platforming completely. So if they're going to do anything with any of the already bikes that we have, it'll they'll probably CVO something. Yep. I mean, that's just what I think they'll do. And like I said, the, it, you know, they should do the CVO Fat Bob or it'll be a CVO Sport Glide. Or they might do a – it'll still be called the Fat Bob Special, but they might bump it up to the 117. So you have the 107 and the 117. Kind of how when the Lowrider S came out, you had the, at the time it was a 103 and it bumped up to the 114. One, 110. 110. 110. Yeah, 110. Uh, so that's right. I mean, that's another option. Yeah, I can see that happening. Because I feel like, I mean, I've said it in my test rides that 107 to 114 you're talking $1,200 difference it's it's a no fucking brainer. oh yeah so I don't know maybe if they made it like a $2,500 difference and you got all the way up to the 117 it might be worth it or mm. I, I, don't, I don't fucking know I don't, I don't know if they would go because currently the 117 is strictly held for the CVOs so I, I unless that's the CVO model yeah, um, I don't foresee Harley breaking that tradition. And if they're yeah, if they're gonna do it, they're gonna name it the CVO, and they're gonna put that CVO price tag yeah. on there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're probably right. It won't be you know, twenty five hundred dollar difference. It'll be no. uh, eighteen thousand dollar difference. Yeah, because <sighs> the a new Fat Bob is what seventeen sixteen. The for which one? Either what's what's the low end starting price on those? Uh, sixteen eight, I think. Yeah, because I think there's, what, nineteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000 gap on the CVO touring models from their regular touring models. Yeah, something like that. Or from the specials. Stupid. I, I think we're going to see a $50,000 Harley in the next two years. Oh, yeah. I guarantee that, yeah. Yeah, the Fat Bob starts at seventeen. Yeah. We're going to see a $50,000 Harley. It's going to be a live wire with the special paint job. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they'll, they'll CVO it somehow. It's the CVO live wire. <laughs> Gold plated tassels. rims and shit. Tassels. <laughs> yeah. Have Tron lights built into it. All right. When we come back from our break with Brush Hero, we'll go into our closing argument. If you prefer washing your own bike and car, Brush Hero is the ultimate DIY detailing tool for you. 100% water powered, all you have to do is hook it up to your garden hose and go to town on your dirty ride. With the various interchangeable brush heads, you will be able to take care of those hard to reach spots around the engine, your rims, and anywhere else road gribe can get stuck to. So if you are a DIY detailer, pick up a Brush Hero today. And if you use the coupon code WHEELS, you will get 10% off your order. And we are back. So. I'm coming up with this closing argument on the fly. Oh, boy, this should be good. <laughs> and I, I said fly for a reason. Do you think Harley will be switching over to a fly-by-wire um, throttle on all of their bikes in, yep. the, in the next year or two? So Sportsters all the way up, streets, whatever. I can see that happening. I, I can absolutely see that happening because then they can standardize, you know, it's standardized so that it cuts, you know, the training requirements, yeah. cuts the parts issues, you know. I mean, yep. they're already standardized from soft tails up. Yeah. Soft tails are the exact same as the touring. As the, touring. Uh, the only thing I think it will happen, mm-hmm. I'm questionable on the time frame just because of the amount of problems that they've been having with their current throttle sensors. I just had mine replaced, and when I was looking up to see if I could fix it, I was definitely not the only one. Yeah, Everyone else on the forums and on the YouTubes were describing the exact same issue, and I felt it in multiple different bikes, and I think yours has the issue as well. So if you notice it getting worse, they did replace mine under warranty for free. And my headlight, too. That's good. Yeah, your headlight was doing some weird, like, dimming shit. Yeah, it was just the bulb. They swapped it out, and it's fine. So I, I think B 
because you see so many other manufacturers going to a throttle by wire on all of their models, I think Harley will follow suit. Um, one big benefit I see from the consumer side is if you have throttle by wire, you can add cruise control yep. a lot easier because it's all electronic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you think about it, a lot of folks would, you know, the ones who don't have cruise control say they wish they had a cruise control that wasn't just the uh, little throttle lock. Throttle lock, yeah. yeah. So yeah, to add to add cruise control parts and well, let me let me rephrase that parts plus the labor to initiate it. So not the actual labor to install the cruise control saying if you bought the parts, put it on yourself, you have to take it into the dealer to have them initiate, like turned on on the system. Yeah. It's 250 bucks. So that's 250 bucks. Well spent. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Oh, you're saying putting it on like a touring or a soft tail model. So for example, my fat Bob does not have cruise control, Mm -hmm. but when I put my bars on, I'm going to buy the cruise control module install it onto the bike and then have to take it into Harley so they can flash it so they can flash it is there like a special button that would be added so that you can do it it swaps out the entire left hand yeah the switch. whole left hand module okay. yep. so then it pretty much would it marry looks, it up just to the touring model it looks exactly yep. like the touring okay. minus the the buttons the button the turn signal buttons are a little bit different but okay. other than that they're exactly the same is that a Harley after or a Harley part yes sweet and I forgot what I was gonna say don't you love that? It happens. What about? Oh, that? I was going to say another benefit of throttle by wire, which I'm so pissed that we haven't seen yet, which might come this year, because it's one of the things that Indian has that Harley does not have, and that is riding modes. Oh, we still have not seen any sort of built-in riding modes from Harley, and literally everybody else is doing it. Yeah, Yamaha, Honda, BMW, Indian everybody's doing it so that could be something that could be coming this year i could see that coming this year because that's all programming yeah that's all software and they've already got a touch screen for everything already got touch screen already got throttle by wire yeah and we know their ecm can handle it yep because if you look at just all the piggyback oh yeah computers oh yeah interesting well that's something to think about and for our listeners, go onto the Instagram post for this and leave your comments about your thoughts of, around a throttle by wire for all of the Harley Davidson models, not just the soft tone touring. Whoever gets it right will get a like from me. You're you're so nice, so generous. Yep. Jeez. I mean, I don't like any other posts, so I don't even like our posts. Well, I know. <laughs> do you even follow us? I do, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't have to because I get tagged in every single fucking post anyway. So, Cause I mean, I'd you. get it anyways. So I could unfollow you and still see every single post. I might as well just turn the alerts on. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels Podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I, I, I be dead, dude. I like, I like.